Hello everyone. So we are going to start the part three from the unit micromagnetics. So in this part, we are going to determine and we are going to study actually determination of the surface area of the particles as well as some of the derived properties of the powder. So without wasting any time, let's start our presentation. The particle shape determination. We have already determined the size of the particle, right? Now the particle shape determination. The particle shape determination, it need to be studied in the micrometrics because the particle shape actually it helps in the packing as well as in the determining in determining the surface area of the powder, right? So the particle shape actually they influence the surface area number one, right? They influence the flow property as well as they influence the packing and the compaction of the particle right so if suppose the particle shape it is spherical the flow will be fast whether if the particle shape it is irregular the flow will be slow as because the edges will hinder the motion of the powder right now the spherical particles we all know that it have the minimum surface area and does it have a better flow properties right so the safe can also have influence on the rate of dissolution of the drugs how as we have already discussed as the sphere they have a higher surface area if the surface area is high or if the surface area is more definitely the rate of dissolution of the drug it increases right so what are the techniques which are used for determination of the particle shape number one it is the microscopy so generally we prefer the light microscope in some cases and even you can use the electron microscope just like your sam and tan and we also can use the light scattering method right so let's study this method so first of all you see the particle shape so what are the different types of the particle shape number one it is the s circular that is a so non sorry not a, a circular it is the ac ac cooler ac cooler that is this shape it will have spike like structure the next one it is the angular it will have angle right this is the angular shape next we have the crystalline shape just like your table salt or the sugar right then we have the dendritic dendritic have actually the bronze crystalline shape then we have the granular shape and finally the last one it is the spherical shape right the next part it is the surface area determination so what is the surface area we all know that the surface area it actually helps in the dissolution of the drug increasing the bioavailability of the drug increasing the flow property of the drug actually it is associated with numerous properties of the powder right so the surface area actually you see it is determined number one by the adsorption method so what is the adsorption method so the adsorption method actually it is most commonly determined based on the Bronier emet teller this is known as BET theory that theory of adsorption it is the Bronier emet teller theory of adsorption so what we used to do here you see we know that the most of the particles most of the powdered particle they generally absorb a monomolecular layer of gas yes over their surface at certain condition of the partial pressure of the gas and temperature most of the particles means almost every particle means powdered drug almost every powdered drug they have a monomolecular layer of gas that is adsorbed i am telling the word adsorb not absorb adsorb means the absorb absorption at the surface they generally have a monomolecular layer of gas that is adsorbed the surface right so what we used to do in this particular method you see first of all we are, we are going to have the powder right now this powder it is subjected to a temperature of minus 196 degrees centigrade so where we are going to use liquid nitrogen so the adsorption process will be carried out at liquid nitrogen temperature at minus 196 so the liquid nitrogen will get adsorbed at, and they will form a monomolecular layer over the surface of the solid particle right now afterwards what we are going to do so once the adsorption has reached equilibrium means no more adsorption has taken means taking place then the sample that is a powder sample it will be heated to the room temperature 
earlier the temperature was minus 196 where the liquid nitrogen they have formed earlier now the surface or now the layer of the solid particle they will be heated to the room temperature once you are going to heat it the nitrogen will escape that is the nitrogen gas will dissolve and the volume it is measured how we are going to give this measure the volume you see as each nitrogen molecule it occupies a fixed area so one can compute the surface area of the previous sample just take the weight of the sample before putting in minus 196 degree centigrade what was the weight of the sample after absorption what was the weight and again after hitting it at the room temperature what is the weight so by this you can easily determine the surface area right the next method it is the air permeability method so what we used to do in this method actually the powder the powder it is packed in a sample holder now this sample holder it is similar to that of the capillary tube the sample holder it is very similar to that of the capillary tube i hope all of you have used the capillary tube during different time type of experiment right so the sample holder it is just like a capillary tube the powder will be packed in the sample holder right so it seems like the power packing appears like a series of capillaries as capillaries you can assume the capillaries to be in a series to be in a series that is they are forming a continuous line over each other right now air is allowed to pass through this capillary at a constant pressure means in a pipe if we put some powder right now if we are allowing the air to pass in a constant pressure now what will happen you see the air cannot pass through that particular tube because there are what there are powders and because of which resistance will occur so this resistance that is it is created as the air passes through the capillary and thus it leads to the drop in the pressure earlier maybe that is the 30 psi after putting the powder in that capillary and when we are going to connect the capillary with the, 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 the pump through which the air is coming uh, coming out maybe the pressure may get drop now it may become 20 psi right so we know that the greater the surface area greater it is the resistance right thus the air permeability it is inversely proportional to the surface area here so this is the apparatus you see from here air pump it is sending the air at a constant pressure so this is the powder sample actually it is packed in the capillaries form and it is connected here also and this finally it is connected to a manometer so earlier before putting the powder you just check the pressure reading and afterwards after putting the powder in this capillary like structure you will find there will be pressure drop right so which is actually accountable with that of your surface area now surface area determination so the surface area of a powder actually it is calculated using the particle size data obtained, obtained from any suitable method the surface area of a powder it is determined from the particle size data now particle size data we can determine means we can obtain from your microscopy counter there are different type of method right so the surface area of the powder it is calculated using the particle size data obtained from the suitable method now specific surface area now what is specific surface area it is the surface area per unit weight right so how we are going to get the specific surface area there is a simple formula you see actually specific surface area or it is also known as unit volume it is denoted as sv it can be estimated as sv is equal to nothing but surface area of the particles volume of particles surface of the area of the particles volume of particles which is equal to sv is nothing but sv is equal to number of particles multiplied by surface area of each particle run divided by the whole it is divided by number of particles multiplied by volume of each particle so this is the equation for determination of the specific surface area here yeah? so the surface area actually it is a very important parameter for determining the bioavailability of different drugs among which two important drugs are number one the befenium it is a anti-helminthic drug and next it is a bisophalpine which is a antifungal drug so if the surface the, in this particular drug we have seen that if the surface area of this particular drug is decreased the absorption of the drug in the body also decreases so while giving the drugs like isofalpin or befenium we have to determine the surface area of the drug prior to the administration in the 
patient clear so now the next thing it is the derived properties of powder so we know that the size or the diameter they are the fundamental properties of the particle we have already discussed right now the derived property they are related with the fundamental property so volume density porosity right these properties are actually derived from the fundamental properties only and the volume density porosity these are actually the derived properties of the powder so now you see as i already told you it's the derived property so just take an example the volume can be calculated from the diameter of the particle yes we can calculate it if we know the volume then the diameter of the particle can be calculated how or the volume can be calculated from the diameter of the particle for example just take the example of your sphere 4 by 3 pi r cube from there you can either collect uh, means calculate the volume or you can calculate the diameter that is the size right so derived property can be calculated without sometime can be also calculated without the use of the fundamental properties how we are going to explain in the next consecutive slides you see density first density it is the apparent bulk density so what is apparent bulk density apparent bulk density is nothing but whenever we allow a powder just to settle down in a particular area or in a particular column or in a particular uh but it means specified uh you can say passes then it actually led to the determination of the bulk density you see any powder which we are going to for which we are going to determine the bulk density first of all that powder need to be passed through a sieve of 40 number that is it is pre-sieved right so it is determined by putting the pre-c 40 number bulk drug into a graduated cylinder we are going to put the drug in a graduated cylinder suppose we have added 200 gram of drug which has been already pre-sieved means they have been sieved through 40 number uh, sieve and now they are put in a graduated cylinder graduated cylinder means the cylinder in which measuring cylinder in which the volume it is marked 10 ml 20 ml 50 ml like that right so whenever this drug will fall right and this drug it is allowed to fall in the deserted uh, actually the measuring cylinder by use of a funnel we note the volume what is the volume what is the volume how much volume it has taken suppose 200 mg of a powder it may attain a volume of 50 ml it may attain a volume of 100 ml and that is actually noted down but the thing is that for the bulk density we never use any external force we just allow a free flowing powder to be means to be poured in a graduated cylinder the next part it is the tap density now the name itself it's it says a tapping tap tap means tapping we are going to agitate it slowly and slowly slowly and slowly right thus now this cylinder if suppose earlier it has at any volume of 100 ml suppose 200 gram of powder whenever we have put the 200 gram of powder in a measuring cylinder earlier it may attain a volume of suppose 100 ml 100 up to 100 ml it has filled now after tapping if we tap that cylinder suppose we, we have tapped the cylinder using a mechanical tapper then the powder bed it will come down from 100 ml it may come down to 80 80 ml or it may come down to 70 ml this is known as the tap density that's because the powder actually they will arrange themselves and they will settle down accordingly so why we actually need to know the tap density because the data of the tap, the tap density is it is very much essential in determining the appropriate size of the capsule formation appropriate size of the capsule formation for appropriate size of the capsule formation we need to know the tap density so how they are measured just let's see you see here bulk density is nothing but the mass of the powder divided by bulk volume so this is the bulk bulk density here you find you see these are the particles in between the particles there we have numerous voids the empty species the empty species are there thus they have a high amount of the volume right so this is the machine actually where we used to do the tapping the tap bulk density is nothing but the mass of the powder divided by tap tap bulk volume you see here the particles or the solid particles they have come down to close vicinity as because what we have done we have done tapping because of the tapping the particles or the solid particle they will arrange themselves in such a way to attain a minimum amount of the void a minimum amount of the void just compare the void amount here 
sees the area how much there are empty spaces but here the empty spaces it is less this is the tapped bulb density okay so application where it is used so actually this data actually they actually used and in they help to decide the size of the capsule what size of the capsule to be made right it is based on the bulk and as well as the tap volume of a given sample right so you, you just note one thing that higher the bulk volume lower the bulk density just remember higher the bulk volume lower is it is the bulk density and bigger is the size of the capsule got it so it actually helps to decide the proper size of the container or packaging material also for powder filling right so for example for light powders you see for light powders actually when particles are packed loosely light powders the particles are packed loosely there are lots of gaps in between the particles in the light powders light powders and the bulk volume it increases and for light powder also the light powders they have a high bulk volume hence they have a low density right so thank you everyone for your patience hearing if you like the video just press the like icon you can share this video with your colleagues and you can subscribe to my channel thank you once again